In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to look together at two holiday effects in the effects room. Both of these are related to a Christmas theme. And so in order to get to that, we click on our FX, our effect room on the left side. And we're going to look at two of these. Let me show, remind you of how to put them in the timeline. You put your scrubber where you want it to be. You click on the item. We'll start with a candy cane one. And then all you have to do is click on the button FX to track. And it will immediately put it in the FX track starting uh, at, at the location of the scrubber. And the size of it will is something you set here on your options. But of course, in this case, I'm going to drag it across here and make it a lot bigger. And then we'll move to our scrubber to the beginning. And let's see what this one does. If I click to the right, I show it basically drops down various sizes of holiday images. Now there are several ways in which we can control what it does. I'll double click on it. We can control the wind. The default is zero or 100. When we move to the left and play it, I'll show you the difference they blow from the top to the left. If I move above 100, it blows to the right. So that's what this slider does. Then we can control the size. We can have the smallest size to the largest size. We can control the 3D depth, uh, which works best if you're going to render 3D. I won't mess with that one now. And the density, which basically changes the number of objects that are generated. And so these are the ways in which we can control them. But there's another way as well. We can also add a keyframe. Let me show you a bit about that. This is different than some other keyframe usages. When I, when I start, let's go right back to the beginning and put my scrubber on the end. Uh, if I click on any of the diamonds, it will set these values. We'll just click them all on for now. And if you're not going to use a keyframe, that they just stay stuck at these values during the whole course of your effect. So here I have the effect, and here I have uh, my, my keyframe set at that moment in time. I'm going to move the scrubber over a little farther, and we're going to change things. What we're going to do then is we will put the wind down near 100, which would mean basically down will increase the size of the smallest units to make them bigger and the larger units obviously bigger yet but then we'll decrease the number we'll make them fewer here now unlike some other effects normally if you have a keyframe from here to here and the values change you have a gradual move from this point to the other point that's not what happens here it stays steady until it gets to this point, and then instantly it becomes whatever the values are here. I'll show you how that works. So we'll click here, and now we'll play. And we have our, they're blowing to the right, and they're roughly in the same size category. Then uh, when we get down to that point in time, all of a sudden you'll see a big change. And now they're falling virtually straight down and they're fewer, but they're larger. So that's a little bit about how keyframes are different when you're using them with effects. Now I was trying to think about where I would use something like this. And what I came up with was what you see basically here. We have a sale going on. I have a white background, but I have the letters below the effect, which means these, these images will drop down behind the words, not in front of the words. But if, if I click a little farther, we're popping up a Mercedes-Benz there, and I have them coming down in front of the Mercedes because it's on a lower numbered track. If I want them to fall behind the car, I simply take the car and drag it down into track four after my effects track. So this would be, you know, one somewhat uh, meaningful way in which I could use these effects. Let me show you the other one. I'm going to take the candy canes and 
and make them go away. And we'll uh, move our scrubber back over here. The other one we get is one called Reese and Stocking. So I'll click on that. I'll, I'll say Insert. And I'll make it a little bit longer. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and play it. And again, it looks just like the other one. The only difference is you can control it the same way. The only difference here is you have different kinds of images you can use. I'm not going to... I'm not going to go ahead and make them fewer or larger or anything like that. But again, it could work in this case uh, with this particular kind of promotion or advertising if you want. I'm going to let the scrubber move a little bit farther so you can see what it looks like when you use this in front of simply one standard image. And here I have another Christmas one I've put in there and they're dropping down in front. That's another possible application. Now we're going to move into a video clip and they fall down in front of this one. I don't find that particularly um, enchanting or helpful, <laughs> but if you, you want to do that, you certainly can find a, an application in that direction. Uh, so these are a couple of the ways in which you can use the, the effects that relate to the Christmas holiday uh, in your production.